Hello, my name is Anjani Segrist, and today I'm reading my astrology chart, and not in full, just some of the most pertinent things, because um, as you can see along the outside, the outside ring is where I like to put the moment. So for this, we have it for March 10th, which is today. And in the center is my natal astrology chart. So the center is a snapshot of the moment I was born. And the outside is today, right now, where all the planets are. So the reason I'm reading this is because we're having a full moon in two days. I usually don't look at my own astrology chart unless something is just so notable where I'm like, how can this be? What So many crazy things happen in a half of a day that I have to like, hmm, let me just look at the astrology and see what's going on. Um, so I'm doing that also because the full moon is extremely potent for me personally and for anybody who has um, signs in Virgo or Pisces. So I'm not going to do the typical, you know, going through my lineage in the moon and my inner feminine, inner masculine. I'm going to focus more on timing. So that's something that I haven't done um, publicly because usually when people order astro astrology readings with me, they get that first portion, which is what I do when I'm reading Donald Trump's astrology or Tupac or um, Prince or, you know, Bob Marley. Those are some of the ones I've read recently. And I do the first 30 minutes in those um, public readings. But some of the other ones that I have never done, I don't have any public, are strategies, you know, talking about all these aspects and then the timings. So the timings, um, that's what all the new moon and full moon readings are about. So I want to show you with using my chart, talking about specific timings and some of these um, um, aspects that are created by the timings. So just like I said, the center is natally, the outside is the moment. What we do is look at where the planets are moving in correspondence with our natal chart. So for me right now, I have, so Pluto's up here at 19 degrees of Capricorn. Pluto is in direct opposition of my natal moon and my natal Jupiter. So for me, moon and Jupiter are always going to be expanded. It's always a, you know, something that I work with is this natally and also Pluto square to this. So what the moon and Jupiter do together is sort of, um, it brings a jovial kind of feeling. Something that I um, can give as an example is in my childhood, I had a very tumultuous, crazy, a lot of just intense childhood, uh, Pluto square the moon. That's something that you can, you know, reading a chart, you can assume or guess, or, you know, from the chart, Pluto square the moon would say that there was going to be a intensity, a dark, mysterious, um, something that, you know, a term we would use as a victim that, you know, stuff keeps happening to them. They have this sort of underworld experience in their home, in their childhood. Okay, so that's something that I carry. And then Jupiter there, making it bigger. So the way that I've experienced this is that I um, actually would, what we call light polarized. So all the intensity, all the raw um, underworld experience I always took it as, oh, well, that's normal and not that big of a deal. You know, it didn't really strike me as like, wow, until, of course, you know, you, I got into the Navy and would tell stories. Hearing stories mostly was what got me when I would hear other uh, women talking about their childhood and crying and like, oh, my God, my this one girl, my dad never mowed the lawn. It was so embarrassing. The house looked a mess. And I'm like you're crying about that? Like you had a lawn, like that's good. <laughs> you know, I didn't say that because early on I realized that the amount of suffering that people feel is going to be relevant to them according to their 
material, things that they've, they've went through, it means the same. The feeling is the same no matter what the material is. So um, early meaning 18 years old, I realized that and I have always been empathic to what their story is. And I don't say, oh, well, at least you had a lawn. I don't do that. You know, I'm listening and um, and non-judgmentally listening to, to people's stories. So it's funny that I'm mentioning stories because Jupiter is a storyteller. And having this here would say that Natalie, um, you know, being able to hear the story, listen to the story, write my own story. And the way that I wrote my story was different you know, of course, than my sister and brother and the way we all experience things. So, okay, let's see. Pluto in the big sky is in opposition to my natal moon. And also Pluto is square to my natal Pluto. So we all get this at least once in life, Pluto square Pluto. It is known as an underworld initiation. And this is a, a current cycle that I'm in right now. Um, one might say that because I have Pluto squared to the moon, I am used to this energy. I'm used to the intensity. I've been working with this energy my whole life. So having Pluto square Pluto, I'm not going to say that it's... Um, you never really get used to the underworld. It's not That's not the intention of it. The underworld is meant to bring you to your knees. Something that echoes in my mind is like, I come to bring the pain. <laughs> you know, Pluto cycles are really about bringing us to the point where we have to surrender. And surrender is something that cannot be taught. It can only be experienced. And there's no way to calculate, to think your way into surrendering or to muscle your way into surrendering. It happens on its own accord. So um, that is that. The, you know, the Pluto square, you'll get it at some point in your life. I just turned 38 um, on March 8th. So it can happen anywhere between 35 and 40 one 40 ish 42 45 sometimes just depending on when you were born that you'll have that cycle so and then again you know depending on like my kids were born when pluto was in capricorn so they you know my daughter has uh, capricorn rising so she is in a pluto cycle you know it's a constant for her it's something that she is born into learning about um so that's that. Then this, let me, I started here and I got away from it, but basically what you could say by this is um, this opposition is activating my lineage, activating my emotions, setting it into uh, an underworld initiation. I'm having this underworld initiation two times, basically. It's like a doubly deep and intense um, I like to think of it as a shamanic journey, uh, an underworld initiation into or a shamanic journey into the underworld could be another way to say that. So there's that. And then let's look over here in the sign of Pisces. I have Mars, Vesta, the sun, the south node and Juno in Pisces. So Mars would be my relationship to the masculine, to my inner masculine, the way that I see men, the way that I, the form of the masculine that I most wish to connect with has to do with this um, universally loving, empathic form of the masculine. Uh, Vesta, my sacred work, or the, uh, the way my friend calls this the sacred hearth. You know, the fire that's burning in your, I think of heart, and I think of sacred heart. Every time he says hearth, he's talking about it being what keeps you going, the, the, the fire within you that, you know, it's a connection to your sacred work. It has to do with like the priest or the priestess, and it's like the fire that's continually burning within you. The sun, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So Pisces is like the illuminating thing about me. You know, the sun in Pisces is like 
everything that I do, even though my Venus, which is my form of the feminine, is with the midheaven, up there, right on the surface, um, is like Athena. It is a sort of Aquarian, because my Venus is an Aquarius, it's still going to have the flavor of being universally loving and compassionate, empathic, psychic, a healing type of energy on everything that I do, because not only my son, I have all this stuff in Pisces. The south node, we can say that my um, the lineage or what I already mastered has to do with uh, Pisces and also this 11th house um, altogether. And then Juno, the way that you most wish to connect with, um, we Juno is no... Uh, my school doesn't use Juno in, in readings, but I like to look at it because it shows us about marriage. It's a marriage indicator, you know, your commitments. To me, I want to have this um, in my relationship. If, you know, if and when I have a partner, there is an overall feeling of getting each other, um, having that universal love and compassion within our relationship that expands out to everybody. It's one of the most important things to me. It really, really is. And Juno is there kind of confirming that. So the sun obviously is in just about the exact same place it was when I was born. So that we call this a solar return. It's not always on your birthday. For me this year, it landed on March 7th. Mercury is going over my, I mean, this is all present. It's all active right now. So communicating is huge for me right now, getting out my ideas, sharing my message, and also something that I've been really drawn to lately is I want to write. I want to write about this. I want to write about that. One of the things that I'm going to write about, it's on my laptop right now, is Chiron. What, um, the way that Chiron interacts with the gender planets, gender planets being Venus and Mars, and how, you know, if you have Chiron, the way that that will affect, um, affect you as, you know, your feminine essence, your masculine essence, the way that you connect to the other um, for relationships. Chiron influences that. And for me, I have, there's Chiron, to a perfect, exact square to my Venus and also to the midheaven. So this is a major thing that lately um, I've read three charts in the last two weeks that had the same thing. I wanted to, I want to say the same problem. It's not a problem. It's really intense and magical when you can learn to work with that energy. And when I give the examples of what that feels like, you'll know if you have it or not. So basically, since I'm here, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, Chiron square to a gender planet. It intensifies your sensuality, your sexuality, and it also, uh, the way that I've experienced this, and I have talked about this a lot publicly and in my personal relationships, that I'll be all in. I meet somebody, I'm head over heels, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I want to do everything with them, for them. Um, I lay it on thick, you know, and and they're just like, oh my God, they get so in love with me. Every relationship, every every time, you know. And then one day I wake up and I'm completely over it and I don't know how to turn it back on. It's just done. And I usually feel really horrible about that and I've tried many things, you know, how to turn it back on, how to, um, in the last part of my life, this, you know, I would say the last five or six, you know, maybe three or four years, um, I just say it in the beginning when I meet somebody, hey, this is what I do. I am like honey and I just, you know, smear you with honey and then I'm done. The jar is empty. I don't know. I don't know what happens. It's just, that's just what happens. So this is a real thing. Like people who have studied Chiron and um, worked in depth with Chiron, this is part of it. So right now we have Chiron going it's in the sign of Pisces. So I just got done reading this uh, full moon report and you can see that Chiron's placement is right between the sun, right between Mercury, 
having to do with, um, you know, the way we're communicating, the way that we're showing ourselves, showing our wounds and making that be a big, you know, radiating that throughout and everything that we do, showing our wound and working with our, um, our sacred wounds. So I think I'll stop here. Actually, let me just do one more because this is really beautiful, highlighted here. Mars is opposing the North Node. So wherever the North and South Node are, this is like the big evolutionary um, axis here. In Vedic astrology, this is known as dragon's head and dragon's tail. Uh, the way that we use this currently is this is the destiny, what you're moving toward, and this is what you've already mastered, what you're moving away from. So I always like to look at the axis. Where is the axis and how does it interact with your personal, uh, what you have as a personal planet? For me, Mars is right in line with the North and South node. The way that I've experienced this recently has to do with the way I relate to my own inner masculine and something that occurred in December with my very best male friend um, has really started to reorganize the way that I hold relationships to men and to my inner other, what I like to refer to as my inner lover. I'll add an article that I wrote called The Dance of Codependence, which was inspired by, um, you know, just reawakening my connection to the masculine. So I'll share that here in the spirit of, uh, you know, laying it out, getting the wounds, talking about the wounds and getting them out, you know, and sharing that. So I'll share that there. So that's all I'm going to share today from this chart. And I hope you liked it. Um, you know, I want to also offer, um, for everybody who follows my page that, especially if you're active, you know, you're commenting and you're liking the videos. I really love the feedback. It helps me learn and grow so much more in what I'm doing. So just to offer you this, um, leave me your, your birth information. You can mail it to me if you don't want to have it. I wouldn't want to have it publicly if I were you, you know, it's just mail it to me. And I'll have your chart here so when I do the full moon and the new moon reports, I can use your chart as a sample because I always like to show not just what's happening collectively, but to show a sample of the way it affects people individually. So send me your info and I will use your chart as um, an example, which will be cool for you to watch it, to watch the videos and see how that's um, interacting with you and how it's affecting you personally. So thank you so much. I love you. I really love um, interacting with you and I look forward to connecting with you soon.